السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Today we move on to the next hadith concerning the dua of the parents This hadith is a lengthy hadith but it is tremendous in meaning and with respect to our belief and our aqeedah Of course we are still on the work of Imam al-Bukhari al-Adab al-Mufrad hadith concerning the prophetic morals on the dealings of humanity between itself and this is hadith number 33 where al-Imam al-Bukhari rahimahullah he said haddathna ayyash ibn al-walid the ayyash ibn al-walid narrated to us and he said the abdul a'la narrated to us and he said that muhammad bin ishaq narrated to us from yazid bin abdullah bin qusayt from muhammad bin shurhabil a brother of ban of of bani abdiddar from abu huraira radiyallahu anhu who said that i heard the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam say that no human has spoken from the cradle meaning as a baby except isa the son of maryam alayhi wasallam and the companion of juraj So the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum, they said, O Prophet of Allah, and who is the companion of Juraj? Who is the companion of Juraj? So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Juraj was a monk who lived in his hermitage, where he used to, the hermitage of course, where monks seclude themselves and live alone, and they worship Juraj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and of course this was related to a story or an incident that took place before the sending of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so this is from Bani Israel or an or incident that took place amongst the children of Israel so Juraj was a monk who lived in his hermitage and a herder of cows would come and seek shelter at the foot of his hermitage and a woman from the village would come to this herder one day juraj's mother came to him while he was praying so she called out and she said ya juraj she called out and he said oh juraj so he said to himself whilst, whilst he was still praying my mother or my prayer meaning should i choose my mother or my prayer So he decided to prefer the prayer. Then she called out to him again for the second time. So then he asked himself again to himself, he asked himself in his mind, my mother or my prayer. So he decided again to prefer to continue the prayer. Then she called out for the third time, O oh, Juraj, calling out to him. So then he said to himself, my mother or my prayer so again he preferred the prayer so when he did not respond to her she said may allah not bring you death o juraj until you have looked into the faces of harlots then she left So that woman who would come to the herder she was brought one day in front of the king after she had given birth to a child so the king questioned her he said to her and whose child is this she said it is juraj's child so the king said to her the monk of the hermitage she said yes So then the king he ordered he ordered his 
his soldiers or his courtiers. He said, go and demolish his hermitage and bring him to me. So his hermitage was hacked down with axes up until it collapsed. And then Juraj's hands were tied to his neck and he was dragged along and paraded through the district of the harlots and prostitutes. When he saw them, he smiled. And they stared at him along with the people. And the king said, Juraj, do you know what this woman claims? He said, what does she claim? The king said, she claims this baby is yours. So Juraj turned to the woman and he said to her, is that what you claim? She answered, yes. He said, and where's the baby? She said, so the people, they said, look, it is here in her lap. So he faced the child and he said to the child, Who is your father? So the child, he replied, It is the cow herder. Upon that the king, he turned to Juraj and he said to him, Shall we rebuild your hermitage from gold, O Juraj? Juraj said, No. So then the king said, Then from silver? Juraj said, No. So then the king said, then from what shall we rebuild it? Juraj, he said, just return it to the way it was. Then the king said, And what was it that made you smile when you smiled? Juraj said, Something that occurred to me. My mother's dua reached me. Then he told the king and his courtiers and those around him, about it, meaning about the dua of his mother. And this chain of narration is sahih, and the hadith it is sahih. And may Allah have mercy upon Juraj, rahimahullah. So this qissa, or this story, is the fitna of Juraj, the monk. That which has, which has been mentioned in this story, in this hadith, is from the most amazing authentically reported stories and a true story and that is what occurred with Juraj rahimahullah and the goal or the intent of Imam al-Bukhari placing this narration here is to make clear the affair of the supplication of the parent against his or her child in an affair that is deserving to be answered. And the mother of Juraj, she made dua against him with this dua. This dua, the result of which you heard and you saw in this hadith. So this calamity befell him. And because he was ardent and strove to remain in his prayer, preferring the pleasure of his Lord, then based upon that he was also given relief. And he was given a miracle. And that miracle was the speech of the child from the cradle. So through that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him deliverance and gave him relief. And it also occurred to him that this affair or this calamity befell him and befell his hermitage where he used to live and that was due to the dua of his mother against him. And the reality is that this qissa or this story there is within it a tremendous lesson for the Muslims with respect to being dutiful to their parents, to their fathers and to their mothers. And that you should not expose yourself to their anger or to their dua, of course. Because that dua of the mother or the father, it may befall you, especially if you are deserving of it. 
نعم. And that you do not do or say anything that will cause their chests to tighten against you. Do not cause your parents to feel restricted by your behavior and by your conduct. So, do not fall into that situation where one of them makes dua against you and therefore a punishment is hastened against you or that it is delayed till after your death. So therefore, such a person who puts his parents into that type of situation and restricts their life and makes difficult their life and causes them to cry then he has only harmed himself and he has committed a crime against his own self why because he is the reason for the dua of the parents against him Naam. also in this affair just of course this is related to a sharia before the Sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But in the religion of Al-Islam, if you are praying a nafal prayer and your parents call you, then you must answer them, if it is a nafal prayer. If you are fasting, a fast that is a nafal fast, a supererogatory fast or optional fast, and your parents command you, then you break it. The sister who wears the niqab, and her father or her mother tell her to remove her niqab, then she must remove it. Why? Because all of these are sunan. They are emphasized recommendations. They are not obligations. Of course, if your parents were to command you to abandon praying Fajr, for example, or not to fast Ramadan, or not to pay the zakah, or to remove the khimar and the jilbab before leaving the house, then in that your parents are not to be obeyed. So the scale here is what? The, the obedience to parents is an obligation. And these affairs that I've mentioned are optional, meaning the nafal prayer or fasting, a nafal fast, or wearing the niqab, for example. Then these are optional and they are recommendations, meaning that they are from those affairs that are mustahab, mandub, recommended and rewardable. But they are not obligations, whereas obedience to parents is an obligation. So when they call you, you answer. When they call you, you answer. If you are doing something that is from the nawafil. Also in this matter, you see Juraj. Rahimahullah, that in this affair, that he was a worshipper of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he had to question himself, my mother or my prayer? Because he knew the rights of the mother and he, knows, and he knew the rights of his Rabb. And perhaps it is for this reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent that miracle to him by way of which that he was liberated and freed and delivered from the accusation of the woman. And likewise, as a lesson for him, as a reminder that the rights of the mother are important, such that the mother made a weighty dua. Wallahu musta'an, how many people could survive that type of accusation? That she made a dua that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not cause you to die up until you look into the faces of harlots and look at the accusation against Juraj, the monk, the worshipper of Allah, a man of that caliber, a man of that stature, that he is accused of fornication. And that they bring down his house and they demolish his house. And he was only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that saved him. Within this is a tremendous lesson for the believer in relying in Allah and calling upon Allah and seeking the aid of Allah. And you find that even in this period of hardship upon Juraj, that when he saw that they took him through the district or through the area where the harlots were, that he saw their faces, that he caused him to smile. 
Why? Because Juraj is a believer and he believes that the dua of his mother has come true. He was not angry with the decree of Allah and nor was he discomforted by the decree of Allah because he knows that this is the will of Allah and the dua of his mother. So this is why he smiled even in that situation of severe calamity and difficulty where he's been acute, where, where his house has been destroyed or his hermitage has been destroyed and then he faces the woman, his accuser but he trusted in Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent this miracle to him as for the other person that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned and he is the noble prophet and messenger from the resolute of all of the messengers about whom the Prophet ﷺ said that the closest of all of the messengers to me is Isa the son of Mary, Jesus the son of Mar Maryam alayhim as So he is the closest of the, pro of, of the prophets and messengers to our messenger Muhammad ﷺ. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this affair of Jesus or Isa ibn Maryam speaking from the cradle the speech that he spoke with and this was from the miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon him and that is because he was a prophet of Allah and he was the messenger of Allah alayhi salam and from the best of them and the most noblest of them from the five who are known to be the, the five of the messengers of firm resolve and the last of them who will be asked to intercede on Yawm Al-Qiyamah and then he will refuse and after him the people will go to our messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to intercede for them on the Shafa'atul Udma or the, or the greater intercession on Yawm Al-Qiyamah for the judgment to begin. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that he blessed him with this miracle and it was a it was honor and nobility for his mother in defense of her so that the accusation may be lifted from her of fornication and this is why we have so much love and affection for this mother of Isa for she was a believing woman a righteous woman a pious woman from a pious family from the lineage of prophets and messengers this Maryam alayhi salam may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show her peace and mercy and may Allah be pleased with her that she was accused and she was accused because she bore a son she bore a son and she was not married and Jesus or Isa does not have a father there is no male father for Isa he was born through through a miraculous birth and Maryam alayhi salam that of course she would she feared the dishonor that she would receive and that's why she said to the angel that came to him came to her how am I to bear a child when no man has touched me how am I to bear a, a child when no man has touched her? No man touched Maryam alayhi salam. So the accusation would be lifted from her of fornication. That the people would accuse her of. Whilst they knew the reality of the affair. That she was not. That she was not a woman of impiety. And she was not a woman of loose morals so he spoke from the grave and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned this in surah Maryam he said indeed I am the slave of Allah that he has sent me or that he has sent to me the book and he has made me a prophet Isa alayhi salam said this from the cradle 
وجعلني مباركا اينما كنت واوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا and he has made me blessed wherever I am and he has commanded me with the prayer and with the zakah so long as I am alive وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَاتِي and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded me to be dutiful to my mother his duty towards his mother began in the cradle my brothers and sisters his duty to his mother began in defense of her. From the word, first words he uttered were in defense of his mother from the cradle. And this is why he said that Allah has commanded me وَبَرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي that, that Allah has commanded me to be good and dutiful to my mother. And this was while she was still in his cradle. And this is not an affair of course that is normal in fact it is extremely unnormal or abnormal because children do not normally speak from the cradle and it was an honor for his mother and a miracle that made him a prophet and made him a messenger to the children of Israel to Bani Israel and it is amazing, or should I say shocking, that whilst they knew this about Isa ibn Maryam, that he spoke from the cradle, and he announced to them who he was, and his lineage through his mother is a lineage of prophets, that they would deny this claim of his. And then even after he had proved that to them, when he had become a man through miracles, they still denied him. فَلَعْنَةُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِمْ Those who disbelieved in him. So, this was from those affairs that he was singled out with. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him and he did not die. Isa ibn Maryam of course was raised into the heavens and he was not crucified even though they tried to kill him and they tried to take his life but they were not able to do so so this is another affair that he was singled out with he was singled out with the miracle of being able to speak from the cradle and he was singled out with miracles throughout his life that were related to the affair of medicine returning the sight to the blind by the permission of Allah, giving life to the dead, by the permission of Allah, curing the sick, by the permission of Allah. And likewise, that he was raised into the heavens by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that he will return before the hour. At the end of time, he will return back to the earth on the wing of two angels to the masjid east of Damascus. And he will rule and he will judge by the Sharia of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will be from Ahlu Sunnah. He will be from those who follow the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he will establish that. Though he is a prophet, then he will get married when he returns back to this world. Before the hour, Isa ibn Maryam will marry and he will have children and then he will die. Because every soul shall die. Then the believers will pray over him. Then, sh then they shall bury him. And all of this is established in proofs and evidences. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So glorified and exalted, free of all imperfections is Allah. Al-Hakim, the wise. Al-Alim, the all-knowing. The one who when he says, Kun, fayakun. The one who says, Be then it comes into existence, whatever he wills. Barakallahu feekum. So upon that, inshallah, we'll finish for today. And I hope in this is a tremendous lesson for all of you and all of us. Wa jazakumullahu khairan.
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته